Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So uh, today's video, we're going to be uh, doing some more on the uh, timing and the distributor. Uh, so at the end of the last video, I said I was going to have to take the distributor back out and reset uh, my total limit. So that's what we're, I'm doing right now. I'm not going to do it on camera. I'm just going to do it real quick, knock it out, get the distributor back in the car, and then we're going to set the timing. And I'm going to show you it kind of in depth how to set the timing what to look for when you're setting the timing and uh how you kind of know when it's when it's right it's kind of a kind of a mysterious uh thing uh, it's hard to it's hard for me to explain i'm just now uh recently kind of getting an understanding about it myself uh it's one of those things that's always kind of been mysterious to me and i've never really quite got a grasp on it until recently and uh i'm still no expert by no means so you know you don't you don't want to use all my advice just kind of kind of a guideline but uh i'm i'm kind of understanding uh what does what and why it does what it does and i'm going to kind of explain that in this video i appreciate you watching let me get this thing taken apart we'll get it back in the car and i'll be right back All right, so we're back. We got the distributor back in the car. I got uh, adjusted, I think, pretty close to where we need it. Uh, it's really hard to kind of tell where you're at without, you know, you kind of, I just kind of do the math. I know I had 10 degrees uh, advance in it. So you got a 360 degree circle there and you can see for how far it moves and I just kind of kind of divide it up best I can. It's hard to do, but I, I add a little bit more to it so I should have more total uh, advancement now from initial to total. Uh, what I'm looking for is about uh, 20 degrees and before I was at 10. So uh, it started to rain again, but we're not gonna let that stop us. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bump the engine over, get a top dead center and then I'm gonna show you kind of uh, a better understanding of timing and what it means and what it does. All right, let me get this thing rolled over and I'll be right back. Okay, so turn the engine over. I'm about 10 to 12 degrees after top dead center. So it's already reached its firing point and it's 10 degrees on its way back down. You can tell by the line and right here's the marking. So that zero focus. So the zero right there would be perfect top dead center and I'm after uh, you got before up here and after down here. So I'm after top dead center. So what I'm going to explain is how this timing affects the, the engine. And all this is, if you've never done this before and you don't know anything about it, all this is, is when the spark plug fires in relation to the position of the piston. That's as about the simplest way you can put it. So if you look here, um, this white mark, which is kind of blurry now, but this is my number one location on the distributor. And I got one on the cap too. So here's number one. So we're gonna use this line for number one. If you look at this, I am after number one. So kind of you know in a simplified manner that point or rotor button is in about the right spot because the crank is after the compression cycle on number one so at this point it's already fired and it's moved another 10 degrees so this is a, a baseline if you look at your advance and try to this is the mechanical advance I'm talking about. So when this spins, the inertia is what spreads the weights out and it adds advance. So as this is spinning, it's actually gonna move this, the weights is gonna move this, so it fires faster without actually moving the uh, distributor that's locked into the, the engine. So as it spins, this moves, the weights moves out and that moves that. So that's actually going to fire in, in my case, hopefully 20 degrees before it reaches this point. So 
when the distributor is going to be, like say it's pointing over here, it's going to, inertia is going to push it this way. So as it's spinning around, it's going to fire when it gets to here. And it, down here, it should be, depending on the RPM, uh, you know, 20 to 30 degrees before it reaches its firing position, which is top dead center. And uh, the reason for this, uh, I mean, in a, you would think in a perfect world, why not just fire it at zero when the piston's at top dead center? And the reason for that is that, that it takes time for the uh, the gas and the air mixture to reach its itemized per, uh, level, the perfect level of ignition. You have to mix that fuel up. It has to reach its perfect potential to fire. And by firing before the reach the piston reaches to the top top dead center you're giving that air time so when the piston goes down your uh, valve opens which lets the fuel and everything in and it's it's mixing it and so when it's on its way back up before it reaches top dead center you want it to fire which ignites the flame and on the way back up it's reaching that premium pressure so it uses all the fuel uh basically uh, I'm sure there's a lot more scientific terms that uh, I could be using, but that's the basic gist of it. So by having the firing sequence start early, you are burning all the fuel, so you're not wasting fuel. If that fuel just sits in there unburnt while the piston's on its way up and then it ignites, yeah, it's going to push the piston back down, but it's not burning at all. You're just pushing unused gas out the exhaust, which creates uh, un, a rich, you know, uh, smelling exhaust. You know, you can get it behind a vehicle and it smells like gas, and that's why they, they don't have enough total or uh, advanced timing. Uh, it creates uh, excess engine temperature, uh, ex, uh, exhaust temperature, because all that fuel unused fuel is getting in the exhaust and it's burning inside the exhaust and it creates your exhaust temperature to be a lot higher and the uh, engine just doesn't run as good so uh we're going to go ahead i'm going to get everything hooked back up that's kind of the basic you know terminology of what we're doing and now we're going to put a light on it and i'm going to show you uh i think i got it pretty close right here that it it should fire right off but uh we might have to take it in and out i'm hoping i can do all this on camera i know it's going to be loud in here so i'm going to, have to talk louder for y'all to hear me but uh i want to do all this on camera it's going to be kind of hard for me to hold the light in the uh, camera so i brought the tripod with me i'm hoping i can zoom in there and you can see what i'm actually doing and i'm going to explain why what why i'm doing it uh it's kind of a i want to everybody that works on engines to be able to understand this and not just read it in a book to set the initial here total here and never understand why because that's what i always did you know i've been working on cars since i was i don't know 15 and uh i remember i had an old ford ranger and i rebuilt the motor threw the motor in there went by the book but you know and it, and it ran but it never ran good and uh you know now i didn't understand why i didn't understand like you know why it was backfiring why it was uh you know, throw an unused fuel at the exhaust. It would throw a flame at the exhaust when you rev it up. And that was all that um, burnt fuel been just sitting in the exhaust and then it would blow it all out. But, uh, you know, this, uh, I hope I can explain this to where y'all can understand and uh, kind of give you a better understanding of, of why we do this. And uh, let me start off by saying, I know I'm already about six, seven minutes in this video, but uh, let me start off by saying, for a typical everyday driver, you don't have to go to this extreme. I'm just doing this because I'm trying to get peak performance out of this engine. Uh, I'm trying to get every single, you know, nugget of horsepower I can out of it. And, uh, you know, for a baseline setting, you, you don't have to go to these extremes. The uh, total time is way more important than initial. Initial kind of gets you low stoplight performance it's raining hard now and uh so when you you already have that advance in it 
so you got that that little extra at the bottom end for an everyday driver it's not necessary uh, the total is the most important thing because if you get too much total timing into it what you're running to is a uh, detonation all right so what detonation is is when the uh the combustion instead of having a, a singular combustion it creates like little air pockets and it combusts at the wrong time basically so whenever the the piston is coming up the burn cycle should be already finished and that and that burn is pushing the piston back down so what happens is you're creating multiple explosions in the side of that piston and when the piston comes up it's already at its peak point and there's uh, you know more than one explosion and it creates just a lot of pressure so ex you know too much pressure that the cylinder head can't handle and it ends up uh, creating uh, damage to your pistons and valves and it can it's not good so uh, too much timing can cause that uh, a rich uh, too rich fuel can cause that but uh, we're going to try to um, get this thing going now and uh, hopefully I can explain this better while I'm doing it uh, I'm doing the best I can I, ho I hope that everybody understand what I'm trying to say it's, uh, it's a very very complicated process to explain I guess it's why there's a lot of mystery behind it but uh, let's get this thing running alright here we go so we're going to got everything set and uh, I did plug off the uh, port for the uh, vacuum advance because we're not going to we're not going to time it with it yet all right let's try it So if you look now, we have like one degree in it, and it started, so it's kind of almost retarded. So we're going to add some to it. Uh, you hear how the engine smoothed out? We are at 12 degrees advance. That's your initial time and set, we're at 12 degrees. My camera's not going to focus. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but it's uh, right at 12 degrees advance uh, at an idle. So that is our initial timing. So what we're going to do now, we're going to rev it up to about 2,500, and we're going to check it again. And that will be our total timing. Uh, we should be all in at 2,500 with these springs. Hopefully, we'll go a little bit over, and uh, I'll check it again. I'm not going to be able to do this with, uh, I'll, I'll put the camera back on the tripod. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. But uh, I'll get, uh, I'll try to get, a better understanding of
2600 RPM. I took it all the way up to 3100 and it didn't change uh, much at all. Um, it kind of looked like it dropped a little bit actually, but I was at 26 degrees at 2500 and then I went up to 3100 and I was at about 24, which is weird. It shouldn't be dropping at a higher RPM, but I'm not too worried about two degrees. But let me flip the camera around. I'll show you where I'm at. All right, so this is 26 degrees. That was at 2,600 RPMs. So now, I'm gonna go back down to the initial to double check the initial. actually at about 10 degrees so it did change a little bit we'll make another pull and we'll see if it changes again with my light I can adjust the advance by hitting a button on standard lights you just have to read read your timing tape I like this dial better because my timing tab only goes 10 degrees. So anything over that, you have to have a tape on the uh, the balancer, which I do not have. So we're gonna try to do this on camera. Did you see the light, the timing mark move? It was going up. So it was advancing as I, I only went up to about 1500 RPMs. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do some math. Let me shut this off. We're gonna go in the shop and we're gonna do some math. Okay, so we're in the shop where it's quiet. So now we gotta do some math. Uh, we had uh, 10 initial and 26 total. So that's 16 degrees of mechanical advance. So to get to 34 total, we need to take it up, or 34, sorry. To get it up 34 total, we need to take it up eight more degrees. So that is a, uh, gonna put my initial at 18, which is a little higher than I want it. Uh, uh, it, the car really likes 18 degrees, but I, it, uh, I had it sitting there before and I drove it around a little bit and it, it runs really good. But after it, uh, gets the temperature and you let it cool back down, it kind of drags the starter a little bit. So I'm going to have to pull that shooter back out again and recurve it. <laughs> That's kind of the, uh, cat and mouse game of doing it like this. Uh, I mean, it is what it is to get, uh, to get it where you want it. Uh, for now, I'll probably just redo it and I'll go about 16, maybe 14 initial and see where that puts us as uh, total. That uh, if you see, we started out with 14 when I revved it up, it moved a little bit. I think the uh, distributor maybe was a little bit too loose and it maybe it turned. Uh, but I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recheck it again a couple different times. But that's just a basic, uh, basic timing tutorial uh to there's a bunch of different ways you can set your initial and uh, we'll go right real quick too with the uh simple vacuum gauge and uh just kind of hear you know with your ear what what the engine likes but we'll go right real quick all right so we got it running again we're still at our 10 and uh we got the vacuum gauge hooked up the manifold vacuum right here uh, some carburetors have manifold vacuum on them. Uh, this one, I don't, I don't think it does. 
But uh, we're going to watch this gauge and we're going to watch your RPMs as we take the timing up. What we're looking for, when we advance it, the RPMs are going to build up and we're going to adjust the idle down to where we want it to be until we're reaching peak vacuum and the, the RPM's not dropping back down. So we're just going to grab the distributor and you can hear the engine speed up. All right, slow down. So, if you look at our gauge, our vacuum went up. We was down here, and now we're over here almost 50. We're gonna check our timing. Now that's 20 initial, that's too much. But the engine does seem to like it. So just for video's sake, we're going to keep going with it to see if the RMPMs keep climbing. That's all I got in the adjustment wise. That's 38. That's way too much. So we're going to back it down some. I think that's about 18. That's 28. Now we're 24, we're gonna take it down a little bit more. Trying to get it to about 900 RPMs. And keep this in the green. That's 18. So we're, we're good on our vacuum, we're good on our RPMs, the engine sounds good. Uh, we're at 18 initial, which should put us at 34. Uh, I'm gonna check the total again and see where that puts us. So we're right at our benchmark of uh, 34 total uh, at 18 degrees. So I've done the math right. Uh, I'm gonna log it down and we'll drive it and we'll see how it does. Uh, if we get too much initial, we'll have to turn it back down. Uh, now we're gonna hook the vacuum up and I'm gonna show you what the vacuum does.
Alright, so with the vacuum hooked up, we're now at 47. So that's, with no load on the engine, that's how much vacuum that uh, canister is, or how much advance that that canister is pulling. That's like uh, 13 degrees or 14 degrees, something like that. Yeah, 13 degrees. So that, it's pulling quite a bit. And that's with the engine under low or uh, no load part throttle. So at part throttle, cruising down the road, no load, um, you're you're pulling 47 degrees of advanced time, and that helps with fuel efficiency. Uh, when you when you hit the gas and you floor it, the uh, ported vacuum should lose vacuum, and we'll show you that on camera too. So if you watch the gauge, it's at zero at idle. You hit the gas, it starts, it starts going up. It's pulling about 10, 10 uh, mercury. You get it up there. It drops back down to zero when you pour it. So when you're going down the road and you're part throttle, you know, no real load, and you're pulling vacuum advance. When you floor it, all the vacuum drops out of it, and so you're running that 34 initial again, or total again. Right, so it's been running for a pretty good while now. I've been uh, playing with this uh, timing. The engine temperature's up to about 200 degrees. Got the initial set at 18. So we're gonna let it cool off for about three minutes. And what that does is kind of, it heat soaks the motor. And actually your engine temperature goes up for a brief moment after you, you shut the engine off because you no longer have that uh, water pump and that fan going. So the temperature's gonna spike. We're gonna let the temperature build up a little bit. And then we're gonna start it back up and we're gonna listen for some uh we're gonna listen to the starter and see if it kicks back any okay so it's gonna sit for a few minutes we're gonna start back up and listen for uh starter kick back or see if it you know struggles and make sure it starts smoothly All right, it seems to be starting pretty good. So uh, that's going to wrap this one up. I uh, hope this is educational. I hope y'all uh, use this information. If you already know all this, you probably already know more than me. So leave me some comments. Tell me what I forgot and uh, what I missed. Uh, if you don't know, you do now. I hope this really helped you because it was something that I've always, you know, kind of struggled with understanding. But uh, this is summed up. Basically, all we're doing is setting... The timing to spark before the piston reaches top dead center so as the piston is coming up uh, so right now we got the initial set of 18 18 to crank degrees before that piston reaches top dead center is when that spark plug is firing all right i hope that helps i'll see you next time thank you